to Typecast Heroes, where we believe typology can save the world. I'm Amanda Fogelson. And I'm Jesse Miller. And today we are going to be talking about your cognitive stack. So the next series we're going to start is the 16 types. We're going to have a video for each of the 16. And we won't be doing um, anything with the data or the research. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch Welcome to Typecast Heroes so you can find out what that's all about. But we are going to be doing a brief overview in preparation for that series. But before we can begin the types, we really need to explain to you what your cognitive stack is. So if you've seen all the cognitive function videos, then you know that cognitive functions are mental processes in your brain. And when you take the Myers-Briggs test, it gives you a four-letter code, which then tells you which functions you rely on. So you can watch all of the cognitive function videos to decide or to learn more about what those cognitive functions are and how they work. Now what we're going to talk about is what the cognitive stack means. So you do have, of all of the eight cognitive functions, four of them are perceiving, which is how you take in information, and four of them are judging. So you get, based on your four-letter code, you get one main way to take in information and one main way to make decisions. And then you also get their opposite pair. So each cognitive function is paired. So the best way to do this is with an example. And because ISFJs do not get enough love, we're going to be using ISFJs as the example today. So this is the ISFJ stack. First is introverted sensing, extroverted feeling, introverted thinking, and extroverted intuition. When you have, so when you take the test, this is what the Myers-Briggs test gave that person, gave an ISFJ. They gave them introverted sensing, feeling, thinking judging sorry so this is how their stack works they are introverts so they get an introverted function first mm -hmm. so they got introverted sensing as their first one introverted sensing if you watch that video automatically comes with extroverted intuition so that's how we get the first and the fourth function then they have to get and that's their perceiving function and we know that they're perceiving because again this is a little fuzzy but if you watched our video on J versus P, I explain how we know that they get a perceiving function first. Then we jump down to, they have to make a decision somehow. So we look at their judging function. So that's where the feeler comes in. So they get extroverted feeling because the first and the second function have to be an opposite attitude. So attitude is extroverted or introverted. They have to be in the opposite attitude because that's what Carl Jung said that you needed in order to be a balanced human. And because extroverted feeling comes with introverted thinking, that is how the stack is formed. So now you have four functions. So Marie-Louise von Franz is somebody who did a lot of work on this one down here in her inferior function. And she noticed that people have a tendency to feel a certain way about their bottom function. So you can make predictions based on their actions because of this being here. So after she did that, Amanda and I went back and forth on which model we were going to use because when you look on the internet, a lot of people call these cognitive functions different things. And we went back and forth on whose model we were going to use. We decided to use his because I like him. So a lot of people use different terms for the order of the stack. But the point is that when you have a function in a certain place, if you have extroverted feeling in the dominant position in the first oh, one. You didn't tell them who. Oh, sorry. <laughs> We're gonna use his, and this is John Beebe because I like him. He's an ENTP, but I still like him. <laughs> he does a good job explaining all of the functions. And today we're only mm -hmm. gonna talk about the first four. So if you are familiar at all with him, he does go into all eight. You have eight functions, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. But we're not doing that until later. So we, when we deal with the 16 types, we are only gonna stick in their ego mm -hmm. for now because it's complicated enough as it is. If you feel like you have questions about your shadow functions, if you know what we're talking about already and you want to discuss that with us, we are happy to discuss. So don't take this as we're not gonna talk about it. Mm -hmm. We're just not doing videos on it yet. We need to get through some of the basics first, but you're welcome to message us and come talk to us about it. Mm -hmm. But so John Beebe made the most sense to me and because I like to cite my sources <clears throat> and this is where it's coming from. If you have any questions at all, I'll even send you the ISBN number so you can order and check me. As I mentioned, because of the work of Marie-Louise von Franz, she noticed that this last function, we typically act in a certain way to protect that function. Um, we can tend to be sort of defensive about it. 
So she wrote this whole paper on the, or lots of papers and lots of lectures on the inferior function. And after she did that, other people started noticing patterns of how you act. So basically, based on which placement the function is. So basically, the point of all of this is if you have SI, it's going to act very differently if it's in the first slot. And whatever is in your first slot, our ego tends to do a similar thing with. So this again is just helping you with extra language. So the first thing, whatever is your first function, is usually called your dominant or your hero function. And so no matter who you are, you have a dominant or hero function. It is the very first function in your stack. Mm -hmm. And you're often going to take this for granted because you don't even realize that you use it. Um, and it's an area of pride and strength. For you. Now that does not mean that whatever it is, is your magical power or your super like, you are the best ever at it. It just means that your ego uses this the most. Mm -hmm. This is what your ego has decided or your brain has decided that it is going to default to when you are going throughout a daily basis. So that's why that function means so much, as do all of them. But when we're talking about default setting and what's, what's your constant, what you're consistently doing, this is just running in the background essentially, but it's also part of all of who you are as a whole person. So take you as a whole person and this is a massive part of you. There's also, and this is also a scale. That's why there's a scale down here. So you could have SI, like if you have SI and any and they're on an axis, your SI could be like way over here, which means you're not really using any as much which again, it's which a, would look like this. It's in the fourth function. Yeah. So again, they're on a scale. So when you're looking at throughout the world, you are relying on SI way more than you are any if you are an ISFJ. Um, so hero for that person would be SI. So SI is your hero. And then any is your inferior or anima animus is what it's also called for John Beebe's work. And he chose these Latin words because he felt like using Latin words to describe this, explained the kind of archaic way that our brain uses them. Our brain relies on these. But for our purposes, we're probably gonna be using just regular English, so inferior function is what we're gonna be using. And gender also matters in young psychology, which is why we have boy, girl, and all of these Father, things. father, all that. But again, you'll probably hear us more. Mm -hmm. Dominant, auxiliary. Tertiary and inferior. Or parent, I will probably say parent, child. Okay, moving on. All right, so the two middle two. So we have um, extroverted feeling and introverted thinking. And again, this is on a scale. So if you look, this is actually probably going to be more like this. Very likely that they're going to be using their extroverted feeling and introverted thinking equally, which is why they're in the second and third position. So in John Beebe's theory, this is the auxiliary or mother, father, or parent. For um, the third position, it's sometimes called tertiary or boy, girl, or child. All right. So that is what they are going to be called when we refer to them. So if you, even if you were a ESFJ, the first position is always called dominant mm -hmm. and hero. And again, this is what your ego is good at. On the fourth function, it's what is ever paired with your dominant one, but this is the one that your ego tends to be kind of self-critical of. You feel, it's called an inferior because you feel kind of inferior, inferior about it, <laughs> embarrassed about it, defensive about it. Yeah. A lot of defensive behaviors mm -hmm. come from your inferior function. And then your two middle ones, auxiliary and tertiary, which is parent. This one, if you notice, is in the opposite attitude of your introverted sensing. And the reason it's in the opposite attitude is because you need that check in place. You can't be introverted all of the time. It's like a checks and balances in your own mind. Mm -hmm. And so this one, the parent, it's constantly putting you back in your place. It's like, no, no, you cannot be introverted all of the time. It's time to come extrovert. And when you extrovert, you're going to be an extroverted feeler. So it puts you in your place. Now, again, a lot of different theorists have different ideas on how often we use these middle two, but... From what I've seen in my work and from what I've read, the thing, the theory that resonates best in practice and in theory is that these two are almost competing for your 
attention. Yeah. You're kind of always fighting between them, just like a parent and child would. So this one, parent wants to be responsible, like, nope, nope, you've got to be responsible, like, balanced human. And then the tertiary child is like, no, I want to be bratty today. I want to be really stuck in my own, because if you notice, SI is introverted, TI is introverted, these are both introverted, and ISFJ is an introverted person. It's also pretty comfortable to use it because it is introverted or extra, whatever your dominant is. So that's going to be the one that feels the best and is the easiest to use is your dominant hero function. Your child kind of pairs with it in the sense that it's also comfortable and a little easy to use because it's in the same attitude. Mm -hmm. Also, why these two matter is not so much to determine if you're a feeler or a thinker, because again, you use those almost equally. So that's not the point. The point is, are you an extroverted feeler or an extroverted thinker? Or are you introverted feeler or an introverted thinker? So that's what the cognitive functions and your type will determine. It's not so much if you feel or think, because again, everyone does both of those things. Mm -hmm. So when we go through each of the 16 types, we will refer to something as the dominant or the hero function. That means it's just all you have to remember is that's your first one, and it's the one that you are strongest at. It is the one that your ego defaults to the most. And then we will refer to your auxiliary function. Again, this function is kind of like the parent. It keeps you in check. It's in the opposite attitude to make you balance like a parent would. Then you also have the tertiary or the boy-girl child. And that one is something that you tend to be a little bit more immature with, bratty with, childish in. We call ours bratty, I, just so you know. I like, call mine bratty yeah, constantly because yeah. I have a bratty, bratty TI and I'm yeah. very under, I, I'm well aware of it. Um, and then the last function, again, it is paired with the first. It is the one that your ego tends to feel badly about not being able to use better. So you get defensive about it. You get kind of, um, like I said, embarrassed about it. Mm -hmm. So no matter what is there, when you go and watch our cognitive function videos, watch it through that lens. So if you are watching on introverted sensing, but your introverted sensing is down here, think about how often you are kind of defensive about your memory or protective mm -hmm. of your memory or kind of um, even sometimes even dismissive of memory because it's in your fourth function and you feel badly about it typically. Your ego mm -hmm. will feel badly. So if you had introverted intuition as your second function, as an ENFJ or an ENTJ, then that means that that function is always going to try to keep you in check constantly. So your introverted intuition would act as a parent. It's like, nope, you can't extrovert. You can't do everything all of the time. You have to step back and look at the patterns. You have to stop and assign meaning to things. You have to. It's going to constantly be pulling you like a compulsion. So then your third function, no matter what you are, let's say you're an INTP and your third function is introverted sensing, then that means that it's going to always act kind of bratty and a little bit um, childish and John Beebe and others use the word innocent. Um, the reason that I'm hesitant to use that one is because it gives off this idea that it is somehow inherently pure or good or all good. the time. And it is not. Mm -hmm. It is not good in this position. Um, it is immature is a better word. Yes. It can be good. All of them can be good, but typically what we're seeing is the third and fourth function. They're not. Yeah. They're the third and fourth function are trouble areas for people. Mm -hmm. And all of them, except for the first one, really can be a trouble area. Mm -hmm. So and if you are And even the first one. It depends on what you are going through. Right. So again, this is in a typical ego, in a typical healthy person, mm -hmm. the first function. So recap, just to tell you one more time, and I get that this video is repetitive, but it is very important for you to understand because I know that when I was learning this from the very beginning, I never got a walkthrough of the stack, not until I started doing my research on my own, which was in extensive, obviously, with the books that I've mm -hmm. shown and all of the, the reading and the research that I do. It took a lot for me to understand it. So. I want to make sure you understand it so when you watch the type videos, you're not sitting there 
wondering and super yeah. confused. No, it's it can be. It's not like it's the easiest thing in the world to understand. But what we're trying to do is make this relatable and easy for and also all accurate. Of you. Yes, and also accurate, and also to where you guys could carry this information with you throughout the rest of our time together in all these videos and looking at the bat the past cognitive function videos and really truly getting it. Mm -hmm. So again, first function, no matter who you are. If you are a typical healthy human being, then that means that you have a dominant hero function. Your ego is happy here. It is comfortable using this, and sometimes you use it so much you take it for granted. Mm -hmm. The parent function is the second one, and that its whole job is to keep you in check and keep you balanced. This often means that you may even end up, if you are in an unhealthy place... You may often end up resenting this function, not wanting to work with this function mm -hmm. because it feels like a compulsion. You are compelled to do it. The third one, we use the word bratty for this one. Um, oftentimes, John Beebe and others use the word innocent. The reason that I'm personally hesitant to use it is because it gives off the impression of being pure or a almost positive thing. And when you are doing something called looping, that is usually considered a negative thing. And so innocent, I don't mean, by innocent, I don't mean healthy or, um, or, pure. or pure. I mean... It's more immature. Immature. And so probably bratty is what you're going to hear us say mm -hmm. because we call our third functions bratty. Mm -hmm. And then the last or one... Or rather, I, I think the better way to say it is that it, it, it can... We can be it very comes bratty, out bratty. With it. Yes, like we we have good intentions by using it, and we know when we're using it, but we can appear bratty while using it. Mm -hmm. And so, and then the fourth function is the inferior one. And again, this is where your ego feels defensive. It feels like uh, you feel bad about it. You feel kind of inferior and self conscious about this function. So this is how your cognitive stack works. So when we go through each of the 16 types, we will be explaining like, oh, that you have an SI hero, this is what this means, or you have an FE parent or auxiliary, this is what this means. Really moving forward, if you're gonna keep watching our videos and to kind of stay on track with us, this is how we are going to be speaking about the functions. So your hero, your mother, father, or parent, boy, girl, child, all that. That's how we communicate to, our ch to each other about these functions. So just know moving forward, instead of saying your first, second, third, fourth function, this is how we will actually be communicating. So hopefully this made sense to you and this helped. And again, if you've already known all of this and you're like, man, I really wanted them to go in the shadow, that is coming. But right now we are covering basic, basic ego for now. Mm -hmm. um, or basic self, if you are doing, if you understand that terminology as well. We are covering the basic four. We will go into all eight, not today. But it is coming. Yes, we do believe it. We, I feel like everyone asks that if we actually believe in shadow functions or anything like that. Yes, we do. Um, but just give us a little bit of time to get all the basics out, get through the types, and then it is our time. We love talking about it. So we are just as excited as all of you are. And if you want us to get there faster, go ahead and subscribe. Yeah. So you don't miss it when we talk about the shadow, because I know a lot of people have been very curious about it because mm -hmm. it's an interesting thing. So and if you just want to know more about your type, go ahead and subscribe as well, because we will be doing all of the 16 types and putting them out pretty quickly. Yes. Um, very fast. They will be mm -hmm. being released um, because there's a at lot. least twice a week because we have a lot to get through. And honestly, we're just ready to give you guys some of this information mm -hmm. and you it's guys fun. are really ready to ask for it because it's constant right now so thank you for watching like subscribe share please 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 share if you guys have already yeah, done the do interview it. we need your friends and your family now <laughs> if you have not done the interview and you're watching this please come talk to us it's super quick or it can be or it can be as long as you want it to be either way works and again you can always do it through a voice call, a video chat, or just through text and email. So it's really up to you, um, but we would so appreciate it because, again, we are waiting to release all the data until we have 100 of each of the 16 types. So 
We're almost there. We just need your help. Thank you for watching. We really appreciate it. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Let's gather around the type fire and sing our type fire song. Our M-B-T-I-T-Y-P-O-L-O-G-Y song. And if you feel uncomfortable, then know there's nothing wrong.